Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about DynamoDB scan versus queries. A lot of people struggle to understand the difference between these two operations, especially those of you that are just getting started with DynamoDB. So I hope to clear the difference between these two things up and also touch on another API called GetItem, which may be useful for you as well. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about DynamoDB scans, what they are and when they are useful or not useful to use. So DynamoDB scans overall are just an operation to retrieve all of the items that exist in your table. And for those of you that are coming from maybe a more traditional SQL or SQL background, they would be equivalent to a select star from your table in SQL. Now, it's very common not just to do a select star, but to, to want to filter down your results a little bit. And that's easily accomplished in DynamoDB using what is called a filter expression. And a filter expression is just a basically an expression that you pass in at runtime saying that you want to limit your results to something that may equal some value or maybe within some range. Basically the exact same thing as a where clause in standard SQL. Now the thing to know with DynamoDB scans is that they can be very, very expensive and they should be avoided in production applications. And the reason that is, is because when you're performing a scan operation on your table, DynamoDB basically needs to iterate over every single record that exists in your table. However, since DynamoDB charges you on a pay per use model, since you're iterating over every record in your table, you're gonna be charged read capacity units on every record. Now this still applies even if you're using a filter expression. So if you have a table that has 100 records in your table and you use a filter expression to get only two records that exist in your table, you're still going to be charged for 100 records worth of read capacity units. So this may not be a problem if you have a very small table, but if you have a very large table, this can quickly be a money sink and you can have a very large unexpected bill. So generally, you should really avoid using scans. And if you find yourself in a position where you're using them a lot, it probably indicates some kind of problem with your DynamoDB schema, and you may need to revisit the structure and how you're setting up your table. Now, if you do need to use scans, maybe for something like a batch job or some kind of script that you need to run to basically pull out all your data and you know maybe do some filters on it, um, it, they do support some operations that make this a little bit faster and not just, you know, one by one or serial. Uh, so they support parallel scans using multi-threading. So you can spawn up a whole bunch of threads, maybe five or 10, for example, and have each of those independent threads be paginating through your DynamoDB table, performing that scan to return all of those results. So that's a, a nice little optimization that you can do if you find yourself in a situation where you need to scan all your data very, very quickly. Now, one thing to keep note of if you're using scans, and this actually applies to queries as well, is that you can only return one megabyte worth of data per call. And extra data that may not be returned in that result set needs to be extracted using pagination. Pagination, if you're not familiar, is just the idea that DynamoDB will give you a key after your first call, you pass in your key with your next call, and it gives you the next batch or the next set of results. Pretty standard stuff. Um, so before we move on to scans, I just want to give you a quick little demonstration of what this may look like in terms of code and an example. Uh, so say we have this table here, and this is what I call a customer orders table. So our partition key is customer ID, our range key, which is our second column is order ID, and our third column is cost, which is just a general attribute about these particular orders. So if we did a basic scan on this example, it would return all of those three results back to us. However, I wanna show you an example of what it looks like when applying a filter expression. And so this is a snippet of code using Python. So the first line there is just saying, uh, give us a reference to our table. And our second line there is calling the scan operation on our table. We're passing in a filter expression, which is saying the customer ID attribute must equal to one. So if we were executing this statement against our table, we would get two records back, both of those records with a customer ID equaling one. All right, so that's about it for scans. Let's talk about queries now and when they are appropriate to use. All right, so DynamoDB queries allow you to retrieve data with a partition key and optionally a range key uh, as an input to your query. 
And just as a reference, I want to bring back that uh, little table example that we had earlier. The big point to remember here about using queries is that you need to know the partition key that you're looking for. So in this case, you need to know which customer ID you want to find. So we can pass in customer ID one in this example in order to get two records back from our DynamoDB query. Now we can also filter our results down a little bit more by using range key operations. So there's a whole bunch of range key operations that you can do, and we're gonna look at one in a couple moments here when I pull together an example, but you can say, give me all the records with customer ID equals one, and then you can say things like for the range key, give me all the records where the order ID is between two values, it's greater than a particular value, it's less than a particular value, and there's a whole bunch of other types of filters that you can apply on that range key. Now keep in mind if you're performing those operations on the range key, you're not being charged extra read capacity units as you were with the DynamoDB scan if you were to use a filter expression. So this is a much better way for you to get records with a particular partition key and allow you to do filter style operations on the range key. Where this becomes very, very powerful would be if our range key was date instead of order ID. So we would be able to say, give me all the records where we, for this particular customer ID and all the records where um, you know greater than or less than a date or maybe the most recent one that was placed. So you can do some interesting things with range key style queries to filter down your results even more. And that's exactly what my second point is here. Uh, in order to do that, you can use these condition expressions, and we're gonna see an example of that in a minute here. Now, if you want to look up results on a value other than a customer ID in this case, which is our partition key. So say we want to find all of the records that have order ID 751. How can we possibly do that? Well, we can do the scan and give us a filter expression and we can do a query, but the problem is with the query, we don't know the partition key, right? We don't know um, where order 751 or which customer order 751 belongs to. Now, if you wanted to do that, then you can query on global secondary indexes. Now, global secondary indexes or GSIs for short are like they, you kind of assume an additional index that you can place on your table. And by doing so, you'll be able to query on attributes other than your partition key. So that's a very, very useful feature. Do keep in mind though, that there's extra costs associated with using GSIs. Now, an important note with queries is that since we're providing our partition key as the input, you'll get much better performance than scans, as behind the scenes, the lookup is constant time or O of one. So that's an important performance characteristic to know about. Overall, you should be using queries regularly. There should be the primary operation that you use in order to interact with get operations for DynamoDB. Now, queries are also very cost effective, but in order to use them effectively, it may require careful thought of your schema. So you need to think about your access patterns of your table. How do you want to retrieve data? That's the primary kind of premise of DynamoDB. You need to think about that in advance and then structure your table accordingly. It's very different than a SQL kind of world where you just start with your data and the relationships between your, your data entities. And then once you define that schema, you just put together queries that'll work with it. With NoSQL and DynamoDB in particular, you need to think about this stuff in advance. So similarly, let's take a look at an example with code. Um, so with this one, we are saying table.query, we are providing a key condition expression where the customer ID must equal one. And then on the second line, we're filtering our results using our range key. And we're saying the order ID, which is our range key in this example, must be between these two specified values, order ID 725 and order ID 751. So if we look back at our table here over on the left, if we were to perform this query, we would only get the first record back in our results set. All right, so just to recap this a little bit, and I wanna to touch on another API really quick. Uh, with scans, we get all of our data, like we can see here. With queries, we only get a subset of our data, provided we pass in that partition key that we're looking for. And thirdly, there's another API called get item. And if we are looking for a particular combination of our partition key and range key, so say for example, we have customer ID one, and we know that we're trying to find the customer ID one and order ID 997, we can pass in those two values as part of the get item request to return that first result. Keep in mind, if you're using get item, you're only ever gonna get back 
a single item. After all, it's called get item. But you do need to provide the partition key and range key if you're using a composite schema. If you're using just a simple schema where you don't have a range key, then you need to provide just the partition key. So customer ID one in this case. Also a very, very useful operation that you should be using regularly if you're interacting with DynamoDB. Now finally, just to, to recap and to cover when to use what, uh, so in terms of scans, you should basically be using them almost never. They're really to be avoided um, just as an exploratory mechanism perhaps, but not really in any production application. In terms of queries, if you need to get one or more records with the same partition key. So in the previous example, if you need to get one or more records with customer ID one, for example. And the second case uh, is that if you need to get many records with the same partition key, and you wanna narrow down those results using the range key conditions, so equal to, greater than, less than exist. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that you can use. And then finally with get item, which we just briefly touched on, if you need to get one specific record with a specific partition key and a sort key, if applicable, of course. If you don't have a composite schema, then you don't need to provide the sort key. And if you do, then you, you do need to provide it. If you enjoyed this video, check out the ones on the right to learn more about DynamoDB. And don't forget to like and subscribe.